Hi, and welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math's Think Thursday problem. This week, our problem is, if there are 12 coins and one of them is false, meaning that it weighs differently, um, and you don't know if the false coin is heavier or lighter than the good coins, how do you find the false coin with three weighs on a simple scale? So to begin, we have 12 coins here, and what you want to do is actually create groups from the 12, and you want to create a group that isn't too large, like two groups of six, but is kind of somewhere in the middle so that when you compare the different groups, you're able to weigh different coins against each other. So we're going to begin by making three groups of four. So now that we have three groups of four coins for the 12 in total, what we want to do is we're going to just weigh uh, group two and group three against each other. So if you do that, then there's kind of uh, two different options for what can happen. So if we weigh group two and group three against each other, we can either get that group two and group three are equal or that group two and group three do not equal each other in weight. Um, so we're just going to go through each of those and the different scenarios that play out in each of those things. So in the case of A, where group two and group three are equal, we know that group one must have the false coin since these two groups of coins are equal, they all must be good coins. So, so in the case that group two and group three are good coins, then all the coins in group one are suspicious and possible to be one of the false coins. So what we're going to do is we're going to weigh two of these coins from the suspicious group in group one. Uh, really any two, we can just take these two. So we're going to weigh these two coins against each other, and in the case that we weigh these two coins against each other, we then have two more scenarios for what could happen. So the possibilities from the beginning A is that we have A1, these two suspicious coins are either equal in weight or we have A2, they are not equal in weight. In the case of A1, we know that then one of these two remaining suspicious coins has to be false. And what we can then do is weigh one of these coins against one of the two coins that we have other weighed, knowing that these are now good coins. And from there, we have another two scenarios for what could happen. So if we weigh this suspicious coin against one of these good coins or against any of the other good coins, we have the case that either the suspicious coin is equal to the good coin, and in that case, the remaining suspicious coin would be the false coin, or we have that the suspicious coin is not equal to the good coin, and we know that this coin then has to be the false coin. And moving on to the possibility of having A2 happen, where you measure these coins and they are not equal, you know that one of these coins, therefore, has to be one of the false coins. So we'll, we're going to do a similar thing to what we did in A1. We will measure one of these now suspicious coins against any of the good coins, which can be seen above. And you have two situations what that can happen in that case. So in weighing the suspicious coin against any of the good coins from above, we have the possibility that either the suspicious coin is equal to the good coin, in that case also making it a good coin, and the remaining suspicious coin therefore has to be the false coin, or you have that the suspicious coin does not equal the good coin, and in that case the um, suspicious coin is the false coin. 
So those are all the scenarios for what can happen in the case that when you first measure group two against group three, you get that group two is equal to group three. So we can now move on to B, the case that group two and group three are not equal. So in the case that we measure group two against group three and they are not equal, in weight, we know then that group G1 or group 1 must only contain good coins. Um, and if we were to weigh these two groups, because we don't know if the false coin happens to be lighter or heavier than what a good coin would be in weight, we know that one of these groups has to be lighter than the other and one has to be heavier with, than the other. So we would just label which one is heavier and which one is lighter. So I'm just going to go through and label that on the coins. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do two uh, steps to interchange some of the coins so that we can then uh, compare the weights of different groups against each other. And it singles out different coins so that we can really narrow down which one would be false and which one wouldn't. So the first step So for the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to interchange three of the light coins with three of the good coins from group one and group two. And now we're going to do a second step where we change some things up in group three. So what we do is we interchange this one light coin in group two with one of the heavy coins in group three. So what we've done is we've manipulated and isolated different coins. Here we have one heavy with three good, one light with three heavy, and one good with three light. And we've done this so that we can see kind of uh, the different comparisons between the coin groups and eliminate which coins are good and kind of narrow down which one is false. So after taking these two steps, what we're going to do is once again, we're going to weigh group two against group three. And that can give us uh, th three different scenarios for what could happen. So those three scenarios are that one G2, group two is equal to group three, that group two is heavier than group three, meaning that the original heavy and light positions have switched, or that G2 is lighter than G3, meaning that the original heavy and light positions have stayed the same. So in the case that G2 is equal to G3, that these two groups are equal, we know that they must all contain good coins if they are equal. So that kind of narrowed out, narrows down where the false coin could be. It means that the false coin has to be one of the three light coins in group one. So we know that uh, the false coin has to be one of the coins switched during step one, one of these three light coins that was moved over. And we also now know that the false coin has to be lighter than what uh, the weight of a good coin could be equal to. So now that we have three options for what the false coin could equal, uh, we can weigh two of these suspicious false coins against each other, and that gives us a couple different scenarios. So weighing 
two of the three suspicious coins against each other, what we get is either the possibility that suspicious coin one is equal to suspicious coin two, and that means that the remaining suspicious coin from group one has to be the false coin, or we get that these two coins are not equal in weight, meaning that whichever coin is lighter has to be the false coin. So moving on to the case of C2, that group two is heavier than group three, meaning that the positions of light coins and heavy coins have switched. What we can tell from that is that uh, the false coin has to have been one of the single coins moved during step two. So it was either this heavy coin moved over here or this light coin moved over here. And we still, at this point, have no way to tell if the false coin is lighter or heavier than what a good coin would be. So these are the two suspicious coins that are possible false coins. And we know that all of the rest of these coins, therefore, have to be good coins. And what we can do is take either one of them and measure it against one of the good coins. And that gives us two options. So measuring either of the suspect coins or the suspicious coins, what we can get is that either the suspicious coin is equal to a good coin and therefore the remaining suspicious coin has to be the false coin or we get that the suspicious coin does not equal the good coin and it therefore is the false coin. So moving on to the third case, C3, where group two is lighter than group three, meaning that the original um, kind of definitions of this group being light and that group being heavy have not changed. So what that means is that when we moved this heavy coin over from group three uh, to join the other good coins originally from group one, what we actually moved over was another good coin. Uh, since the weights haven't changed, what that tells us is that of these three heavy coins from group three, one of them has to be the false coin. It has to be heavier than what the good coins equal and what all of these good coins in group two are equal to. So these three heavy coins, therefore, are the suspicious coins. And what we can do to narrow down which one is false is just weigh two of them against each other. So weighing these two suspicious coins against each other, that then gives us two options for what can happen. So option one is that suspicious coin one is equal to suspicious coin two. And what that tells us is then the third and remaining suspicious heavy coin has to be the false coin, or suspicious coin one does not equal suspicious coin two. And since we know that the false coin has to be heavier than what a good coin is, whichever coin is heaviest would be the false coin. So that's all we have for you today for this Think Thursday problem. I hope you enjoyed doing some logical reasoning. Um, please watch some more of our playlists on YouTube, subscribe on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. Thank you.